Elon Musk may not like it, but hydrogen fuel will indeed power EV charging stations in the very near future. Plug Power, one of the largest fuel cell manufacturers in North America, is betting on that exact idea. They've just launched a multi-megawatt fuel cell system that can support a fleet of electric vehicle chargers on the grid. Now, I can already hear the keyboard warriors typing away. Why on earth would you pair an inefficient power source in hydrogen fuel cells with a very efficient delivery method of EV charging? Why on earth would an EV charger even need a hydrogen fuel source when you can connect it directly to the grid? Well, folks, as is the case with many things in the engineering space, the answer to that question is not that simple. In this video, I want to explain exactly why that is the case dive deep into what plug power is trying to accomplish and explain why elon musk is indeed quite wrong about the trajectory and role of hydrogen in the ev race but as usual folks before we get into it make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so to start things off let's try to understand what plug power here is trying to accomplish you see, Plug Power is an OEM that manufactures in-house fuel cell and electrolyzer systems. And essentially what they recently launched is a system that can allow companies to transport, store, and convert electrical energy in the form of liquid hydrogen. Plug Power's latest product launch can supply over 60 megawatt hours of instantaneous energy to support the charging of 600 electric vehicles using 18,000 liters of liquid hydrogen. So along with the stationary storage of hydrogen on site, Plug Power will provide you with the liquefaction and tube trailers to actually bring the hydrogen from where it is produced to where it is dispensed. And well, for those wondering why exactly a company would partake such a complex strategy, well, it has everything to do with how fragile the modern electric grid actually is. You see, the electric grid is an instantaneous machine. All the power that is transmitted from a source to a consumer is in real time. Electrons essentially move at the speed of light, meaning whenever you connect something into an outlet at your house, instantaneously that energy has to be produced by a generator that is hundreds of miles away. That generator could be run off coal, oil, steam, or in some cases, nuclear. But today, renewables cannot do the role that those generators can do. And well, why exactly would that be the case? Well, because renewables are not a form of base load power generation. What that essentially means is that renewables are variable and we as operators cannot control the amount of energy that a renewable resource produces. With coal, oil, or nuclear, we can directly control the amount of heat that is transmitted to a turbine through steam and then turn that into electrical energy, meaning whenever demand is low, we can physically turn up the generator. However, we can't really do that with renewables that are dependent on wind and solar. And as you can see from this chart right here, the amount of renewable energy that is curtailed which is another way of saying wasted on the grid, is rising at an exponential fashion because simply we don't have enough infrastructure to store it and we cannot use it in real time. And well, believe it or not, that is exactly why Plug's idea makes a lot of sense. Because today, lithium ion batteries or pumped hydro solutions are extremely impractical to use for long duration and large-scale energy storage. And why exactly do we need this long-duration energy storage? Because batteries can only store energy for less than eight hours, meaning if you were to discharge a battery at its maximum power rating, you would only typically get eight hours worth of power. But now think about you having an overcast day with no solar power output from a renewable energy farm for more than eight hours. It means that any energy stored in a battery, no matter how big, you will not have any energy left after eight hours. 
If you have a multi-day outage, that makes the situation even worse. And this is where hydrogen technology starts to play a very key role. You see, pumped hydro is the only other long duration energy storage solution on the market at big scale, but it is obviously impractical to use in decentralized scenarios. You can't just build a hydropower dam tomorrow and expect it to pair up with your solar or wind energy resources. As we get more of these resources online, we need companies and operators the ability to decentralize and store their energy at their own merit. And as you can see right now with battery technologies, anything over one day of storage and the costs skyrocket on a kilowatt hour basis. Even current hydrogen solutions stay cost stable for anything between one day to 12 days of storage. And this is where the energy system of the future really starts to step in. Because many people associate hydrogen technology with only electric vehicles. But like I've said many times, hydrogen is a decarbonization tool, not only an electrification tool. Meaning you can pair it with solar resources to store excess energy for multiple days on end. Meaning you can consume the energy from an EV charging station without having the energy to be produced in real time by your solar array or your nuclear power plant. With all the reliability issues something like the grid in California or Texas has faced, this issue is only going to get worse as more charging stations are put online. Not to mention that every incremental charging station added to the grid requires a multi-month permitting process and interconnection agreement with the specific grid operator. And every state had its own regulations because during different times of the year and different seasons, there are different loads on the grid. This means it's very difficult for grid operators to predict the demand and as well how they can produce the energy at the right time. This results in price volatility and this is where long duration energy storage can play a key role. As a matter of fact, research firms like McKinsey Research, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley have said that to achieve a net zero electric grid, meaning where consumption and production is carbon neutral, you are going to need long duration energy storage. And today the only commercially viable solutions for this application are hydrogen and vanadium redox flow batteries. And well, at the end of the day, this exact recipe is what has made gasoline and diesel so popular and so successful. Think about gasoline stations when you go to pump up your vehicle. Your gasoline at the pump is not produced right when you're filling it up in your car. It was produced elsewhere and then transported in a tanker to underground storage tanks at the gas station. This is the exact process that Plug Power and other hydrogen companies are betting on succeeding for the long term. Only in this case, you will be using hydrogen instead of gasoline and carbon fuels that emit CO2. Obviously, Plug Power will need to make sure that the hydrogen that they're producing for these applications is produced from green resources, but the company is already working on creating plants on a megaton basis per day. It'll be interesting to see whether or not these actually turn out to be real projects within the next year or whether or not these EV charging stations will take some longer time to be commissioned. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below whether or not this makes any sense. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.